Welcome to Real Talk with Cheryl Price, that's me. And today we have a great subject. We're going to be talking about unforgiveness, a luxury you just cannot afford. And the reason I say that is because sometimes we feel like we are owed uh, the feelings of unforgiveness, that I should be able to hold this because these people hurt me or they took something away from me or you know something happened and it didn't go down right and so I'm hurt and I'm gonna hold it against you. And so sometimes, you know, we can't move forward in life because we're holding things. A person has gone on with their life. They're totally happy, enjoying life, and we're miserable. We're sick. We're the ones uh, frustrated and not being able to move forward because we're stuck in our past. So today we're going to be discussing all the things that surround unforgiveness, where it comes from, why do we hold it, and what we can do about it. We have an expert in the field joining us today and we're going to have a great show, so stay tuned for more exciting information. My name is Dr. Fijere Pertilla, and I am the director of the Apostle Frederick Price Ministry Training Institute. The school can offer you the opportunity to learn from the Apostle of Faith, your AA degree, and matriculation to Azusa Pacific Universities. What are you waiting for? Call or visit our website today, 323-758-3777, extension 4660, or www.afpmti.net. Why does God get blamed for everything, whether it's good or whether it's bad? That tells me that the devil truly has been successful in convincing the world that he does not exist. Everything that is foreknown is not necessarily ordained. Old Testament prophets would look into the mind of God about a future event. And those things that they would look into the mind of God about a future event were were based in two categories. That which was simply foreknown by God and that which God intended to happen. In my lesson, is everything ordained by God? We find out the difference between that which is simply foreknown and that which is ordained. Call 1-800-927-3436 or go to faithdome.org and get your copy today. Lessons through the pain became a man. Standing on the heights, been in the boat of bronze Advance against the troop with strength to go beyond it Blessed be the name who trains my hands Lessons through that pain became a man I'm standing on the heights, been in the boat of bronze Advance against the troop with strength to go beyond it Blessed be the name who trains my hands I was watching, or not watching, I um I did a little research on you, Terse, um, on in HBN And I saw that, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw that you had a uh, you actually put your house up so that you could do this. And one of the scriptures that God even uh, spoke to me about that, um, he said that, uh, um, that those who leave houses, leave children, leave uh, wife, husband, the whole, you know, leave all of those things would not fail to, to uh, reap their reward or get it back a hundredfold. So I'm just praying that blessing over you because you're stepping out and I, I believe in this. I believe in HBN. I believe just that God is shifting. He's moving things and some things are being torn down. Some things are being built up. So I, I'm just thankful and, and grateful that we, we sit here tonight because of your obedience. So bless you. I'm seated in a realm beyond human understanding Driven to a new world, the root of a salmon Partially blinded cause I trailblaze another path And when hell rises up, I just maneuver past Feathers is unscathed, except as the sun rays Stepping on sun rays, I'm referencing no page 
This new wine skin, stretching the old age. Crashed against the rock, viewed the death of my old ways. Well, welcome back, and we are here talking about unforgiveness, a luxury you can't afford. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could hold stuff against people and make something happen to them? But that's not what happens. We're holding stuff against them. They've gone on with life, and we're miserable. So we want to kind of discuss that and, you know, kind of get into the intricacies of why people do that and, and what's going on on the inside of them and why can't they snap out of it. And then perhaps get some tips on how to get out of it. And we have a very, very special guest with us today, Dr. Minnie Claiborne. Hello. I love this lady. She is a Christian counselor and therapist. And uh, I love the fact that she, she marries the two disciplines. She, she's got the scientific side, but then she also has the Christian side, which is even more important because Absolutely. she can hear from God Absolutely. and actually be able to minister while giving us the things that we need, you know, those antidotes that you need to right. get yourself right. That's right. And so uh, unforgiveness, Dr. Minnie, there's a lot of wow. people struggling with, the, with yes, this. Yes, because they don't know how to. And often they're told, just forgive, just get over it, just move on. And they don't know where to start. You know, right. if somebody has offended you, uh, whether that's a rape, how about that? Something as deeply as that, that has touched you on the deepest part of your psyche. Right. How do you just get over it? And I think that's right. a miss nomer to just say go on and move on without giving some concrete directions for it but you're right cheryl the person who does not learn how to forgive is the most miserable because sometimes the perpetrator is dead mm. and here the victim is still bound by something that they cannot change by interaction with that other person. You right, see? it's almost like they can't get closure now. Right, right, but they can really. Okay, right. Because, yeah, you but can I'm do, saying in their minds, in they're their like, mind, oh my God, can't. I can't get right, closure. Right, now I can't beat them up, they're already right. dead, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so uh, forgiveness is an act of the will. And um, I always teach on the spirit, soul, and body because we are those three parts, tripartite being. And in the soul is the mind, will, and emotions. And that's why I love doing therapy, not just counseling, right. but therapy because therapy helps you to distinguish how each part of our personality operates and what to do for each. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone who needs to forgive, you can say to them, uh, forgiveness is a choice. It's an act of your will. No emotion tied to it. Mm -hmm. Do you, by God's grace, choose to forgive this person because Jesus has commanded it, not because he just wants you to do it, but because it's going to hurt you if you right. don't. Right. And the scripture really implies and indicates and says that tormenting spirits have access to us when we don't forgive. So mm -hmm. the one who has not forgiven is being tormented. And certainly God doesn't want us to open that door for tormenting spirits to have their way with us, right? right? So based on that information and good sense, would you choose to forgive? So you can say, yes, I choose to forgive. But what happens is we think that that's the end all and it's not. Even if you forgive, the wound has to be healed. And that's the missing link there usually. Because I use this illustration all the time because it's simple, if I shoot you in your foot, you know, you can say, Dr. Minnie, I choose to forgive you. I'm going to get you later, maybe. But I'm going to forgive you right now. Right. And um, but you can forgive, needs... but the foot still needs to be tended to so exactly. it doesn't get infected and hurt right. you. So right. that is the same thing. So what happens in therapy is that we say, you choose to forgive. Now let's go through some steps to bring healing. And another thing is that forgiveness does not let the person off the hook, really. It does from okay. you, but not from God. Right. So we understand that God's going to deal with that person who did you wrong. And you're not minimizing what happened to you or anything. What happened to you should not have happened. 
Exactly. But God says vengeance is mine. And if you trust that God is going to deal with them better than you can, hmm. you can you can choose to forgive easier. Okay, see, and that's a great point because a lot of times people are in that state of unforgiveness and it's like they say, uh, you're drinking poison hoping that the other person will die. Exactly. No, that's where that torment comes in. If you drink right. poison, you're the one that's going to suffer Absolutely. and that person will be watching you die. Right. So right. what does this person do? They want to forgive. In mm -hmm. other words, they say verbally, mm -hmm. I, I want to forgive, but yet they are still tormented and still plagued with the thoughts of the person, what they did, how hurt they are. Mm -hmm. what, what are the steps that they need to take? Well, again, they need to choose. So you can really reason with a person. We can do a little uh, um, reality therapy here. In your reality, do you want to remain tormented? In your reality, where mm -hmm. you're living mm -hmm. right now, are you at a good place? Do you feel disconnected from God and other people? Probably so, because when right. we put up a wall to let other people out, we also inadvertently, we uh, let the Holy Spirit stay at arm's length also because he is a person. And so our intimate relationship with God and other people, there's so much misery and torment related right. to that. So sometimes people have to be convinced and then you convince them and show them that because you forgive doesn't mean that person's not guilty. They're still guilty. Right, maybe they feel like they're letting the person off the hook right. if they really forgive it and mm -hmm. let it go. No, but imagine if you had uh, a child, uh, a, a grandchild or whatever, that's say three years old, and mm -hmm. someone, a teenager, a bully, comes and threatens that child. And you say, okay, baby, you go in the house, I'm going to handle that bully. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying, <laughs> you go in the house, in my presence, and let me heal you, and I'll handle the bully. And so if we can trust God, you see, right. to know that God's going to handle it and he's a just God, then we can trust that situation to God and then we can move into that place of his presence so we can get healed. Because once the right. wound is healed and we don't keep revisiting it, see, we'll revisit it over and over <laughs> unless it's healed. Oh, and that causes right. depression. Right, I've That's heard. That's the root of depression. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've heard that uh, if you, uh, if you repeat the same things over and over, you, you're always crying when you talk about mm -hmm. it, there's mm -hmm. pain to you when you right. talk about it, then you're not over it. Right, it doesn't mean you haven't forgiven necessarily, right. it means you weren't healed yet. Oh. And see, that's the other part of it. Yeah, yeah we, we leave them bleeding. Yeah. And that, that is the part that has to be handled. Yeah. We cannot just look at what happened to a person, minimize it and say, get over it and move on. Right. We have to say, but God cares about that. Jesus said, I came to heal that broken hearted place in your right. life. And when we can apply the love and the healing to Jesus Christ into those wounded areas, it's easier for a person to let go. Because okay. you know the scripture that says, forgetting those things that are behind. Wow. See, and people try to mentally, I'm gonna forget this happened to me. I'm gonna forget this happened to me. You're remembering it by saying that. I was just going to say to you, <laughs> okay, now what about the piece with, well, I'm gonna forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget. You cannot forget, and you don't have to forget. Right. Forget in the sense of revisiting over and over, yes, but wiping it out of your memory, no, because God might wanna use it as a testimony. You don't know. But when we go back and visit it and feel that pain over and over, right. then we are just hurting ourselves, it causes right. depression, it right. can where end you up can't move suicide. forward. Yeah. Right. When you, you can't you move can't. forward, you're up you're paralyzed. Right. Absolutely. Be because yes. of the, the hurt, the mm -hmm. anger and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. All right, so when we come back we're gonna talk a little bit more about that because I know mm -hmm. you have some other steps. You got some books and some yes. things that could also help people yes. to move forward. So we'll talk Absolutely. about that right when we come back. <laughs> Unless we go back and deal with some of that stuff, we can't move forward, we're stuck. You, you weren't around enough. You didn't give me enough attention. You were too hard on me. And they've carried that stuff into adulthood, perhaps into their own marriage and their own. In Luke 16, 10, Jesus gives us a true biblical definition of what a steward is. That he who is faithful in least is faithful in much. And he who is unjust in least is unjust in much. We have been given the responsibility to be stewards over the things that belong to God. In my lesson, The Heart of a Steward, I take us through the scriptures so we can see and get a biblical understanding of what true stewardship is. Call 800-927-3436 or go to faithdome.org and get yours today. 
Are you feeling under attack, turned around, or like you're fighting a losing battle? Well, Apostle Price leads and equips you with the weapons you need to fight back. Apostle's teaching, Battle of the Mind, answers the questions you have in your mind. This is war. You're in a war. You have an enemy wants you out. Knowledge and its proper use. You have to utilize knowledge and you have to do it properly. Fight back. Get your weapons now. Log on to faithdome.org. If I may only close Jesus, He will me I. I may only touch him of his garment. I know that I speak in our special gifts from up above. Live and laugh in love. Pass along. You gotta live and laugh in love. Pass along. And we're talking here with Dr. Minnie Claiborne. And we're talking about unforgiveness, a luxury you just can't afford. Now, doctor. Yes, ma'am. Another thought I had. There are a lot of people out here who are getting offended mm -hmm. at things. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what's crazy about getting offended is the offender may not even know they did, they did right, anything. Right. So really, you can't, somebody can't offend you. You have to take offense. Right. You have to, you have to own That's it. That's right. You know, right. you, you pick that up. And so a lot of people are thinking, well, I'm offended, but they're not even thinking about the fact that they're also in unforgiveness or are they not? Is there a difference? I think they're in unforgiveness because if they can't do closure and they think somebody did something to them, i.e. offended them, then there's a hurt that they think needs to be remedied. Right. or an infraction that needs to be remedied or whatever. So they still have the same steps before them, the same choices to forgive the person who offended them because you might not think uh, you're in unforgiveness, but everybody around you knows it because that bitterness is, is seeping out. Right. You know, you're defensive. You can never hide it. Yeah, and when you're defensive that way, you're going to get offended over and over because you have a chip on your shoulder. See? Wow, you're really setting yourself yeah. up. Yes. Absolutely. And then you're carrying that thing around, you're nursing it like a baby, yes. you're putting it to bed and, and all that good stuff. That's and right. It's almost like they don't want to be right. freed of it. Mm -hmm. It's like I want, that's that luxury part I'm talking about mm -hmm. when I say it's a luxury you can't afford. Mm -hmm. It's like I want to be able to hold this because mm -hmm. I deserve to be able to mm -hmm. hold this against that person mm -hmm. because of what they did, mm -hmm. whether they even realize they did it or not. Exactly. The person may not have been even thinking about you and you think that they didn't speak to you or whatever right. they may have had something on their mind so we should walk in unforg and we should walk in forgiveness all the time and just assume the person didn't mean any harm and even if they did maybe they had a bad day it's not always about you right uh-huh you know <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't always be about you yeah so we have to learn to be a christian how about that not just right. say we are but walk in love walk in peace and harmony as much as possible and not walk around all the time looking for somebody to set straight because they did something to us. And oh, I'll you mean you like give them a piece of your mind? Yes, yes. The piece you. that you can't afford to give away? <laughs> mm. Because we need the whole thing functioning, right? Yes, yes we do. I, I think that what happens with people who tend to do that is that there's really a hurt somewhere way in their past or maybe more than one. And it may and not even have anything to do with this right here. It's misplaced <gasps> aggression. I have seen misplaced that before. anger, right. And so that's why I do a teaching called Go Back So You Can Move Forward. Mm. So unless we go back and deal with some of that stuff, we can't move forward. We're stuck. And that, right. that means forgiving very often. And aren't we drawing those same kinds of things to us? You know, when you have that whole aura about you, you mm -hmm. draw that kind of stuff to you anyway. Mm -hmm. So you're going to always be getting offended. Right, you're gonna sure. You're going to always be in unforgiveness yeah. Yeah. and you're going to always and be it's miserable. Gonna, you want to wonder, why is it happening to me more than anybody else? Yeah, wow. because that's what you're putting out there. And so what Jesus has come to do is reconcile us to himself first. And then we can often be reconciled 
with other people without even confronting them, mm. especially in small things. And um, one of the things that I learned in writing the book, Prayer Therapy, Stop Hurting, we'll talk about it later, is that we can access Jesus as our counselor, Holy Spirit as our counselor, and we can process a lot of stuff in the presence of God and we don't have to uh, uh, tell somebody else uh, off mm -hmm give them a piece of our mind, <laughs> you know, all the things that we do, mm -hmm. because that just produces more offense. And sometimes it's just never ending and people aren't speaking to each other, they forgot why. And that's not what Jesus came to give us. We are to be known by our love for one another, right. but we can't love each other if we walk around offended or being offended all the time. And so I think that, like you said, the person who is always being offended, they in my recommendation, need to get into the presence of God and allow Him to deal with some of that, that stuff because it has to do with past stuff very often, not just what they're dealing with now. Yeah, because they are, they're over the top with what just happened. Right. That wasn't even that big for you exactly. to have that kind of response to it. So there's some other stuff That's that right. you haven't dealt with. And, right. and we're all good at not dealing with stuff that we mm -hmm. don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, so Dr. Minnie, let's talk about a couple of um, situations. Okay. Um, for instance, you have the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's always something going on in a relationship mm -hmm. where, oh, I got my feelings hurt, mm -hmm. or you did this, you did that. Sometimes it's a lot bigger, some mm -hmm. very difficult things mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, to have to deal with. But you're in the marriage, so mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you deal with that? You know, this, I have to plug this because okay. I've written the best of me in this book. All right. <laughs> Therapeutically. And I have in here what I call the carry technique. It's a five part prayer, and I promise you, if we will go to God first with our offenses, the way we respond to other people will be very different. Mm. So you have to do this in relationships. You have to, because if you don't, you could have misunderstood and responded in a way that's going to cause a bigger problem. And if you go before the Lord and tell him, the carry technique is a five part prayer. You tell God, I feel this way. I feel that my husband offended me or he, neglected me or my wife has not been respectful or whatever it is. And now God, I ask you into this situation, give me your grace, give me your power to forgive immediately, God. Just let your forgiveness flow. That's A, C-A-R-R-Y. Then you do the R, Lord, I just receive your grace. I receive your power to forgive. And now I just release, that's the next R. I release this to you and I yield to you in praise and worship. And as you yield to him in praise and worship, he's going to speak to you. And he will tell you or lead you to respond in a way that could save the marriage. Hmm. I've seen it happen with people. Oh, Absolutely. Awesome. It's very powerful. All right. We've got yeah, to have so the that's carry just, technique. It's very like, powerful. Oh, we have to get the book so we can know about the yes, carry technique. Yes. All right. Let's talk about a child and a parent situation where there are people who have carried childhood hurts mm -hmm. by their parents. You know, you, you weren't around enough. You didn't give me enough attention. Sure. Or you were too hard on me. Mm -hmm. And they've carried that stuff into adulthood, yes. perhaps into their own marriage and their own kids. Absolutely. And so now they're acting out Absolutely. these same things. Is that because perhaps there's leftover unforgiveness in there or what could You're it being be? really nice. You're Am saying, I being perhaps, nice? Perhaps. Okay, well, perhaps. And that I'll is say, exactly <laughs> what it is, huh? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. And it's playing a large, large uh, number of people in our society, in the church too, just, just all, you know, mm -hmm. we're not exempt from these things as Christians, right? Because right. we haven't dealt with them. When we're born again, we're born again in our spirit, our minds, our emotions, that has to be transformed. <laughs> we don't have a new body yet and our mind is being transformed and in that soul right. realm, that's where the emotions are. And um, this is a prime example of going back so you can move forward. Okay. And I, I base this on the story of Jacob. He left and he had a problem with his brother. He had mm -hmm. taken his brother's birthright. The brother said, I'm <laughs> going to kill you when daddy dies. So just, you know what, look for it. And uh, so <laughs> at a point, Jacob said, uh, uh, I have to go back home because God is saying, go back home. Now, who's at home? An angry brother. Right. And he doesn't know what's going to happen when he meets this brother. But he did something that we don't like to do, Cheryl. He got along with God and admitted that he was afraid. Mm -hmm. And because he did that, God met him, changed his destiny, and he became the prince of an entire nation, the nation of Israel, right. out of whose lineage Jesus Christ was born. So when we go back and deal with those things, we don't know how God's going to meet us or what he's going to do. And so people right. are afraid to deal with the hurt and the pain when they should go right. back now with Jesus with them 
to deal with it and the outcome is going to be glorious. Wow, yes. that's powerful it's because true. people just live with this stuff. You know, hurts and, yes. and pains on the inside and all you can give out is hurt and pain that's because right. that's what you have. So you're, you're unleashing that on your coworkers, on your friends. You see a lot in the church, oh, people yes. who bring their bags and all their oh, goodies with them when they come to the meetings and yeah. all that kind of stuff. You can't get along with it. It's like, oh right. my God, were you not what held happened? enough as a baby? What <laughs> in the world is wrong? Yeah, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about your okay. prayer therapy when okay. we come back from right. this break. Stay tuned. We got more of Dr. Minnie. Okay, we are back with Dr. Minnie, and I have we have some wonderful things that I want her to talk to you about because she's got some great products and things that could help. You know, while we're working through these um, situations in our lives, you know, sometimes you need aids, and I think she has some really great stuff. Yes, so what I did have you bring? some great stuff. I have prayer therapy. Stop hurting. The carry technique is in this one. Oh, it's yeah, in there. it's there, and I have the carry See, technique. Um, that you can get separately too. Just go to my website, drminnie.net. That's D R M I N N I E dot net. Now, this is like uh, the surgery mm -hmm. book. Okay. And okay. this is your follow up. It's read and pray through the Bible. Okay. And these prayers are so poetic and they're therapeutically written so that you have your time with the Lord and you really pl pray about the things that are really hurting you inside, not just the prayers that we think are the proper prayers to pray. Okay. And you, men <laughs> you mentioned something okay. about um, when we go through bitterness, uh, we often come out bitter. Right. And so I did a CD called What to Do When You Go Through Hell. Mm. And when you go through hell, you don't come back with hell in you, mm. spewing it out on everybody else. And I'll give you, I'll give this away. And, and, and it's kind of really the core of what this message is. When we go through hell, we do what Jesus did. He brought back keys. Mm. He took the keys right. of hell, death, and the grave. And because he took the keys, he set other people free. And right. so when okay. we go through things, that are hellish, we're supposed to learn from mm. it so we can set other people free. We're not supposed to bring back the bitterness, the anger, the unforgiveness. We're supposed to bring back victory right. and keys to other people's deliverance. Right, because I always yes. wonder, even people, sometimes people in a position like yours or mm -hmm. a minister of the gospel or whatever, mm -hmm. they have some of this garbage going on with them. And I'm thinking, how yes. are you going to help anybody? Right. And you need help yourself. Right. So these are wonderful aids. Yes. People need to get a hold of them. It'll be on the screen to show you exactly how you can get in contact with Dr. Minnie and her wonderful uh, product. Unforgiveness is a luxury you cannot afford. And even if you want to, and if you feel like you should, right. you cannot do it. We've got to move past the hurt That's right. and move forward. So thank you for watching the show today. Thank you, Dr. Minnie. Thank we love you. you. I love you. It's and beautiful. Thank you. And remember, God loves you, and so should you. Woo! 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 Woo!